am just interviewing you today as part of uh, my graduate paper in mm -hmm. uh, theology and Catholic education. I want to ask you about some life questions. So we're, we're talking about life issues such as abortion, euthanasia, uh, suicide, uh, IVF, and I know that you are associated with uh, the pro-life movement in Calgary. You're, you're very involved. Hmm. Well, this is why I was wondering if I'm really the right person to interview. Uh, let me see here. That, that light was in my face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, the, okay, so the reason I was wondering if I'm really the right person to interview is because um, you said the pro-life movement, for example, and um, I'm working with Calgary Pro-Life Association, where people in the Calgary Pro-Life Association have been grappling for years about um, our name, Pro-Life Association. Okay. And the thing is, we we are coming from we're coming from an educational perspective, so we're not political. Right. And pro-life movement, as as the general public knows it, is more political. Right. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. And when I say political, they're doing marches and they're, um, and I. I don't like to use the word fight, but they're fighting yeah. against abortion. They're fighting mm -hmm. against euthanasia. And um, from our perspective at Calgary Pro-Life, we're not fighting. We're, we're trying to um, help people, educate people, yeah. see that, that the politics of the whole thing Is like a snowball that went that went crazy. We we just need to work with hearts here to right, understand right. pro life is about respect respect for life. And um, some of the pro life movement even slipped away from the term respect. Mm. So I mean, we res we respect all the pro life organizations, of course. And I even um, rec um, recommend people or refer people to other organizations, for example, when they want to make a difference politically, that's the way they do it. But at Calgary Pro-Life, we have two presentations where we go into schools and we're, we're, we're touching the minds and the hearts of young people to say, think about your life and here's a, here's a big message for you. Your life is not for you. Yeah, yeah, that's that's. We a, have a purpose to be here for other people. Yeah, and it's not about your life, your body, your you know me, me, me. It's about what are we here for? Well, guess what? We're here for other people. And when we think about um, why we're here for other people and how this all started at the very beginning of our life, we were our parents are there for us, and then we come to be there for our parents. Yeah, we, we we go from this angle, right? And and then we say you're a miracle, and I can prove it. And I tell you, I go into <laughs> classrooms and I say to kids, "You're a miracle, you're a miracle." To each and every one of them, and some of them will hide behind another person and say, "No," I'm like, "Why are you saying no?" And they say, "I know I'm not a miracle. I'm a mistake." Mm. How do you know you're a mistake? And they say, "My, I heard my mo my mom told me." Yeah. Well, okay. Maybe the mom said, "I'm not going to argue with their perspective of what their mom told them." But uh, and some of them overheard their mom. Yeah. You know, a person says something. I say, "Have you never said anything?" <laughs> you know. Uh, so so we go we we kind of come from this angle. Of right. This right. Right. Angle life from and then we use the gospel of life as our as our yeah I want to say bible but it's our whole course it's our you mean whole, pope francis is uh yeah. uh it's pope john paul ii so oh okay, right yeah mm -hmm. we use stuff i mean for our hearts not so much we're a non-profit non-denominational um organization but the writings are there that are so beautiful that speak yeah. to the value of every human being from conception until natural death. And we try to teach about that. So it's a little different. No, it is different, but it's don't good. Don't have it's an good. abortion. Don't have, don't, don't kill yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's, 
educational. Different. Um, yeah. Certainly, we we don't want people we don't want people to have abortions. Um, but when you said um, a difficult field that I'm in, I thought, well, it's mm. difficult. Like it's not really difficult for me to share love of yeah. life or the gift of you in my life. Or our paths have crossed right now, and I'm so blessed to be here in this classroom, even for one hour. Yeah, yeah. Something I say resonates. I mean. I have walked into a value village and some kid ran up to me and said, you matter. And that's oh. the name of my presentation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's something stuck, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so yeah, anyway, yeah. That's, a, that's a joy. But then I have nieces who don't want to talk to me because they think, um, well, you work for Calgary Pro-Life, you're anti-abortion. Maybe, I really don't know. Um, that much about my niece's personal lives, but maybe they had a close friend or maybe they even had an abortion. I don't know, mm -hmm. but um, they don't want to talk to me sometimes because that's where that's where the difference, it's more right. from the, my personal end than being out there um, for being a so-called difficult field. Right. Yeah, yeah. When you said that in this difficult field of pro-life, I, I guess I was reading the reviews on on Google because I was looking, you know, oh, and some of those some of those reviews were awful. They don't know, like, no. I oh, okay. So if that's why you called me, or if that's how you reached <laughs> me, um, those reviews are not meant for me. Those no. reviews are not meant for Calgary Pro Life. Yeah, and, no, I could tell. Uh, I, yeah, it's too bad. Yeah. Um, maybe one or two out of a hundred will listen yeah, but yeah. who those are for and um i can give i can refer you to that organization no no i've uh, i've had dealings with them because th yeah. they would come outside our school with these exactly well that's who they're uh, posters look their hearts are in the right place but their methods are. and i think and it was like they were trying to trigger kids so they could because they were filming everything it was like they're going to try and trigger kids yeah. to react and then they were going to use yeah. those videos to prove it's, how evil we you know yeah i didn't like their approach yeah it's really not the right way to do okay so that's the difficult part of pro-life yeah, yeah. if you get yeah. involved with an organization that wants to shock people i mean i go into a classroom with calgary pro-life and i bring in eight models of fetal development yeah. And I tell the kids, well, you're in grade six or grade seven or eight. Who here wants to be a doctor um, or a nurse? You're going to see these models again, because this is the beauty of our lives. Every single one of us started out looking like this. This mm -hmm. is not ugly. This is not gross. This is how we all started looking like a little tiny peanut. Yeah. Yeah. Or, I say you might think it looks like a shrimp or an alien or whatever, but what's your masterpiece look like when you're drawing or painting? It doesn't look like the finished beautiful product at the, at the end, yeah, at the beginning. Yeah, this yeah. is what God's masterpiece looks like at the beginning. Just respect that, you know, like you want yeah. someone to respect your art before you finish. Right. And, um, but the thing is, I will show those models and I have had a teacher, well, not a teacher, I think it was, a parent, like a volunteer parent in the classroom, got up and walked out of the room almost in tears. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what did I do? What did I do? Thank God that that lady came back and talked to me after, and she told me she'd had a miscarriage. She'd had a couple of miscarriages. And this triggered that for her. Yeah, yeah. It just, it just triggered that. So if somebody's had an abortion, then it might trigger that, you know, and especially if they see those pictures. I mean, we have enough mental illness and issues, problems like that in our world. We don't need to be adding to it. Right, right, right. right. That's not what we want to do. Um, I'm really more of the mindset, you know better, you do better. Yeah. And there's not enough education. There's, I mean, there's just not enough. Um, yeah, there's just not enough education about how we can get through things, how we can get through difficulties, how we have to work through things in our life 
but that involves allowing people to help us. It involves us being able to be out there helping others or just doing for others or being. But <clears throat> I show a picture of a puzzle with a piece missing. And I ask kids, I mean, grade four to 12, it doesn't even matter. I'll say, have you ever done a great big puzzle like a thousand pieces and you get to the end and a piece yeah. is missing? How do you feel? Every one of them, every one of them, unless you're just joking around with me, says they're so bummed, they're so upset, they're angry, they're this. I say, well, we are, I mean, imagine if you're doing an 8 billion piece puzzle. Yeah. <laughs> That's us. We are in this puzzle and we're needed. Um, right. To connect and yeah that's an excellent think example these pieces are connecting and they're not you, you have to put it in. so anyway that's that's the way i go about it so mm -hmm. pro-life for me is not difficult because it's more of a celebration a sharing it's a right i i feel like i'm the ant coming into to the auntie coming into the classroom and say look i'm just coming from the community to say you matter not only to your family and this school or this classroom, but I'm coming in here to say, I know that I'm going to buy a house from you one day. You're going to serve me in a restaurant. You're going to be my nurse when I'm in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Like you all are just at the beginning and you're going to have your foibles, but you know, we out here know that you <laughs> are there for us. Yeah. And yeah. yeah so that's, that's the kind of there you got my talks. <laughs> Thanks. That's an excellent message. I really, I really appreciate it. And, uh, and I think you're right. You have to change people's hearts and minds. You, changing laws doesn't necessarily change people's behaviors. No. Oh, and then there's the corporal works of mercy, mm -hmm. which I don't spell out for them. I don't talk about the corporal works of mercy um, the way that they would learn it at school, but I do talk about it yeah. in more practical terms and say, guess what? This is pro-life. Mm -hmm. This is what it means to be respecting life. Yeah. And, um, and then some people say to me, but you, I don't even say the word abortion ever in a classroom. And they say, well, you should, the real pro-lifers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, I say, you think I should talk about that to the grade fours? And yeah. like, what? You're talking to grade fours? Because that's, those are the kids who can get it. It's going to come naturally. Yeah. And then the grade eights, I mean, well, okay, I did walk into one grade eight or nine class and this girl sat there like this. Yeah. My body, my choice, my body, my, I'm setting up the models. I'm setting up the class, my body, my choice. And um, <laughs> I just made sure I engaged her in that conversation. I, I said, some of you may have ideas about what this presentation is about, but I'm here to tell you you're a miracle and I can prove it. Right. And I started with that and I went through the whole presentation and that girl said, wow, that was a, that was a really good presentation. And I'm sorry, it was nothing like I thought it would be. So I mean, mm -hmm. I've there's different ways to look at things. Yeah, and yeah, I'm yeah. talking to you right now. If you're not considering an abortion right now, why should I talk about it? Yeah, you exactly. Know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I appreciate well, your approach. I think it's, uh, well, especially when you're dealing with young people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's really important. And um, I mean, with, well, some people will say, aren't you trying to prevent abortions? Well, I'll tell you something. When I'm in those schools, in my heart, I'm really trying to prevent suicides before abortion because when my son was in grade 12 there were five of uh five suicides that year in calgary catholic yeah, yeah, yeah. and um you know i know I was, if they're having abortions they're scared and if they're committing suicide they're scared or they feel they've come to an end of you know they're desperate um so love is needed more than don't do this, don't do that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a cry for help, I think, in both kinds of um, situations. Yeah. And it's hard in one hour to have that kind of impact. Right. I was in one, I was in one school in the Northeast where um, 
I said something like, oh, we were talking about feelings. Um, just to name feelings, grade fives, 10 year olds, 10 and 11 year olds. <laughs> name a feeling just everybody stands up and they say a feeling and then they sit down and um so i heard happy sad the usual scared all these different words for feelings and then somebody said suicidal i think the teacher almost fell off her chair i mean i don't hear that one very often but i heard it in that class three times someone said yeah me too and i was like and then i move into presentation to and how do can we deal with these feelings so if you're hungry what do you need because feelings say we have a need yeah so if you're hungry you need food do you need a big turkey dinner no you might just need a little cracker or something your blood sugar is running low you need a little boost that's why you have recess and a snack uh, just a little background on if you're feeling tired what do you need sleep do you need eight hours right now maybe you just need a little nap to get going again we talk about the physical mental emotional social you know all these yeah. different parts of who we are and then I said I don't normally ask this but since three of you said it if you are suicidal what do you need yeah and so, someone said a gun <sighs> now the teacher really <laughs> she yeah. got upset and I said no nope. I mean we never bring that in we never talk like that about this in the school I mean uh we're so careful not to be political and you know to keep our presentation in keeping with school um everything yeah. I said I said uh the teacher's like that's enough for I said no no it's really important if that's the first thing that comes to your mind we need to talk about it right now there are counselors in this school. There is a doctor across the street. You have parents, you know, if you can't talk to your parents or your brother or your sister or your friend, I mean, let's talk about where you can go, what you could do before you come up with gun. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is really important. And I just, I just said that to them, like, this is really important. We're not gonna gloss over it. That can't be your first thought. But it no. was your first thought, so we're gonna. And um, so anyway, we, we took a few minutes, and then of course I left it to the teacher after that. To catch, yeah, to carry on, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then I mean, three kids said that. I mean, the teacher's now on it. Um, another kid at that same school told me he, I don't know, I I don't give them a lot of time to work in groups. They usually get like a couple of minutes to work on some little thing together. And one kid came and told me he saw his mom at knife point. I said, how did you see? He said, someone had a knife to her throat. I said, how did you see that? And he said, she was having a party and I was supposed to be in bed and I came out because I heard her crying. And they told me they were joking. Well, this kid's going through a day in school with that. Yeah. And um, yeah. Uh, anyway, I just told the teacher after the class that he might need to talk to somebody, but um, it's, <laughs> it was beyond, yeah. those are some of the, I mean, it's not challenging, it's really just a blessing that um, I feel I can be there for that person to just kind of yeah, to open make, up. It, make it easier for his day to go on, because I come in and I leave, you know, he's not going to see me again. And maybe someone's going to be nice to him and um, talk to him later, you know? Right, 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 right. But yeah, th that's probably the most extreme. Everything else is pretty. Yeah, yeah. Pretty good. Okay. So, um, I, I'm, I'm going gonna, gonna to kind of wind it up, right? Because I don't want okay, to. Okay, sorry. I'm taking. No, 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 no. You, you were great. You were great. I appreciate you sharing. Um, but um, can I just ask one, one final question? What, yes. what made you or what inspired you to get involved? Well, as you know, I was working with uh, the Bishop of yeah. Calgary for 20 years, yeah. um, publishing the Carillon. And I am really a person who likes to be with people, mm -hmm. who goes and celebrates all these different celebrations um, on so many different levels. But yeah. anyway, then the new Bishop came in and we did the Carillon for a year with him. And then um, he decided to go a different direction. So I'm driving, I'm driving down McLeod Trail thinking, God, where do you want me to go yeah, now? Yeah, what am I going to do? Yeah. 
And I came home and called the advertisers and Calgary Pro-Life was one of the advertisers that still oh, owned money. Right, 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 right. <laughs> so I said to them, uh, what is an educational resource consultant? Anyway, that's what they were advertising yeah. for. And they said, oh, come in and talk to us. So I went in there just like a person would, um, like me, a person like me would and said, I'm not going to be standing out there with picket signs. I'm you know, I don't know that I want to work with a pro-life organization. And they showed me how they come. This charism yeah. of loving and um, sharing and educating yeah. as opposed to telling and demanding. Right, 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 right. Um, and that really uh, was quite inspirational to hear. Um, my husband and I had... Well, I've always been pro-life. I mean, I'm the oldest of six kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're yeah. all one year apart. And uh, our family was super close. And I, I don't think there was ever a question about respect for life in yeah. my personal family. And then um, my husband and I got married and we had our first child. And then we had a second child who was very ill since before he was born. His kidneys didn't develop. Um, properly and there was lots of discussion I mean even from before he was born the doctors the nurses mostly the doctors were saying um, we need to terminate this pregnancy that was one of the one of the things that happened in the beginning and I said no you're not terminating any you can't right. terminate anything. and um, things got very tense and stuff in their situation and um the doctors were like no we really have to terminate this pregnancy and i was pretty adamant and then they brought this muslim doctor who happens to be married to a catholic lady <laughs> mm. came and talked to me and said yeah we really do have to um, terminate the pregnancy but i'm going to tell you this it doesn't mean we're terminating the baby what <laughs> He says the baby has to come out because both of your lives are at uh, risk. And our best chance to save the baby is to terminate the pregnancy. So to take the baby out. Very, yeah. So uh, they did <clears throat> the very first day and he was minus two months old. <laughs> so um, he only lived seven months. It wasn't a very long life at all. Um, people will, even doctors and nurses will tell me that depending who you're talking to, terminate the pregnancy can go either way. If you don't want that baby, you're, they'll let the baby die. But if you really want the baby, they'll fight like crazy for the baby, for the life. So, but it was a really tenuous, difficult um, situation that we were dealing with, or they were dealing with. I was just being a mom praying for this baby right. since the very beginning. Um, I really believe that even before that baby was born as soon as I knew his gender. <laughs> goodness, that's kind of funny, eh? As soon as I knew he was a he, I gave him a name. Yeah. I had the whole church praying for baby Brandon, and we were praying for baby Brandon here at home and the family. And um, I mean, that was our first gift we could give him, besides, of course, welcoming him to life and yeah. in our yeah, family. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, he lived seven months, but there's not one day that his life is not talked about in our family. His life um, had a lot of meaning for people in my family because he actually saved a lot of lives, um, not through organ donation or anything like that, but when he died, he, I could give you a copy of my book, but I wrote a, I wrote a, uh, oh, I, yeah. story in this book I wrote um, my family ha has I don't know if you know about Angelina Jolie yeah. the situation she went through I was her before she was her mm. <laughs> anyway, we have this BRCA gene that increases our risk for uh, breast and ovarian cancer um, early anyway my mom died at age 39 of ovarian oh, cancer yeah, yeah. Okay? And here I am 10 years later with this baby and he dies. And um, this whole 
BRCA information, breast and ovarian cancer genetics, comes up in the news. And um, as just protocol, after Brandon had died, we had to go see a geneticist. And the geneticist told us our chances of having another baby with the same kinds of problems that Brandon had, and basically said, that was a, it was a fluke of nature. Like whatever happened, happened. Go on, have another baby. And we did, we had another baby. When we took that baby to a doctor, he was fine. But while we're sitting in the doctor's office, we read about this breast and ovarian cancer gene stuff. And my husband says, do you want to um, talk about that with, with our doctor? And I said, why don't we go see the geneticist who, who was, who's an expert in genetics. I didn't realize it was just neonatal <laughs> genetics at the time. But no. anyway, I got an appointment because I was a brief mom of a baby who died a year ago. So I get in, I say, well, my new baby is fine, but I'm really concerned about breast and ovarian cancer genetics because of my family history, da, da, da. And he says, I'm leaving neonatal um, genetics. And he shows me his office is filled with boxes. He's moving up to the Foothills Hospital because he's starting cancer genetics, everything. And wow. he set me up and my sisters up for testing. And we went through all the stuff we had to do. And we are alive today <laughs> because of that connection. And I mean, yeah. I can't tell you it wouldn't have happened without Brandon, but with Brandon, we met so many doctors along the way, and we met that geneticist who walked us through. I mean, I've met cousins, second cousins, distant relatives um, who have all mm. go for this gene testing yeah. and um, either be on high surveillance or have preventive surgery. And we credit it to the life of a baby who only lives seven months. Right, right, right. Yeah. I mean, it's weird. I and mean, maybe it seems strange, but everybody has a purpose. And that's right. Our family, if he would if that pregnancy would have been terminated any sooner and he wouldn't have lived, it wouldn't have worked out the same. Nothing life. works out just the same way, you know? Life begets so, life. Yeah. So that's um deep there in the heart too Good for you. Yeah, yeah. In my pro-life heart so right yeah okay um that 10 minutes <laughs> yeah i just got a warning so uh i, I just want to say thank you for um thank you for sharing i really appreciate it and i uh, i'm sorry i didn't understand the difference and i'm glad you highlighted the difference between what you do and a more kind of activist approach and i really do think that what you do is valuable I've seen I've seen your presentation in school. I remember those models, and um, uh, I remember the kids were really engaged. So yeah, I thought it was very. So I appreciate the work that you do. Thank you. And, uh, thank you for sharing today, especially about Brandon. Thank you. Good to hear. Yeah. Well, I think I think all are important. I I wouldn't say that the political yeah isn't you know the March for Life. It makes a difference every year mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. sure. We're just not it. We have a hike for life, which people kind of confuse, but our hike for life is at Princess Island Park. And that is, um, that's supporting what we do in schools. Yeah. yeah. The banners, you're going to start seeing these banners, beautiful banners with very, uh, pictures are worth a thousand words. So banners with um, just very simple quotes, if any words that speak to really the corporal works of mercy as being real, true pro-life. And when we have that in our hearts, we're not gonna <clears throat> go out, hopefully, and kill people or want to be killed like that. Right, right. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate okay. it. Thanks. I'm glad have I good... see your face because I always get your two names mixed up, like huh? Anthony Benka and Anthony Hills. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And we'll, we'll have to chat about you coming to both these schools and giving a presentation. Oh, sure, yeah. sure. My but, daughter um, went to Bishop Carroll. Oh, did she? Okay. Yeah, you may yeah. you may know um, Amanda Amanda Ackman. She's mm. kind of well known around this, even though she's in Rome studying right now. But she's around. <laughs> okay, good. So anyway, well, yeah. Well, thank you, Monique. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Okay, I'm just going to hang up. Bye bye.